Don't look back, look forwards. And if that means carrying on with what you're doing, great. But if it means throwing it all in the bin, well, so be it. <laughs>
So fair to say that with the bigger companies like that leading the way, we are getting there. It's just a process. Absolutely, yeah. And there's also some really pioneering small companies um, who are doing it in their own way. They just don't get the publicity for it. Yeah. So you and your wife obviously created a company uh, based on your values and beliefs. Uh, do you, you mentioned you screen your clients. Do you take those types of clients that, that also have very strongly held values and beliefs? And as a second part of that question, do you believe that brands today should be more transparent with their values and beliefs or should they continue to be a little more neutral? To some extent for us in how we're selective, part of it is just about us knowing what we're excited about and us actually trying to create opportunities for us to work on those things. Part of it is then about having clear boundaries about things that you just think, no matter what, these are things that we don't want to work on. And it's not just me and my wife, Anita, it's also you know the rest of the team. There's been projects we've turned down where I might have been kind of on the fence, but there's other people in the team who are like, no, this isn't, this isn't why I work at Whole Grain. Right. Um, and then in terms of your, the sort of second half of your question about should brands be more transparent about um, their values and what they care about? I think in general, yes. Uh, I think it's easier for some businesses than others. I think it just kind of historically where you positioned in the market already. I think if you're starting a new company, it's probably easier to start off with, this is what we stand for. This is what we care about. And actually, you know, there's huge opportunity in being honest and open about that stuff in terms of winning the trust and capturing the imagination of customers, but also in terms of attracting talent. Do you help your clients bring their vision out through some of the digital creations that you work with them on? Yeah, so I mean, that's what we try to do is, is, is do more than just literally, you know, more than just build a, a website, actually really get to know them and really understand in depth, like what, what are you all about? What are you trying to achieve? What's, what's the goal here beyond just, you know, increasing revenue by X percent? Um, what's that bigger story you're trying to tell? So that we can then really do our best work in communicating that and helping them reach their customers with that story. Your company philosophy addresses everything from sustainable energy to how to support a living wage. Uh, how do you work with your clients uh, when, when there's an opportunity for that thing to work, to work with them on? How do we work with our clients on those things is really, again, about like us having a deep understanding of those things. I think you can't, you can't necessarily build or design for things that you don't fully understand. And I think that's part of the reason why being very clear about what we're interested in and being very selective about our clients allows us to then mean that when we're working with our clients on those projects, we can get really deep into those issues and have discussions that are not just about the website, but actually about like, what is this issue? Like, what is the goal here that's, that you're, you're trying to achieve and, and have these really interesting conversations. And that's in a way kind of what I love about my job. Yeah, there was a recent BBC story highlighting one of your team members who is partaking in the program whereby you take trains uh, to get wherever you're going to go for vacation or for work or what have you and allowing for the time that sometimes it takes to, to travel by train. Talk a little bit about that and how that works for your program and, and if you've had any experiences with it. Yeah, so that's a new scheme and it's, it's, um, it's been introduced by a climate charity called 1010 here in London. And um, the, the idea is basically that, you know, we've got a team of people who care about the environment and climate change probably more than your average person off the street. But nevertheless, when it comes down to it, most of us fly for various things at some point, and that's got a huge carbon impact. It's, it sort of makes almost everything else you might do irrelevant. Um, so we've been looking at ways that we could try and um, try and encourage people to fly less. The main barrier for most people is time. They think I can get there in two hours on an airplane. It's going to take me like 16 hours on a train. And, and that sounds tedious. Um, so the question is, and this is why it's a, an interesting experiment. If we then say to people, well, we'll give you some extra holiday if you take the train or travel by travel by land in some way. So they could drive with more than one person in a car. They could take a boat. Um, but, but basically, keep yourselves on the ground. We'll give you two days extra holiday. Will people take us up on it and do that instead of flying? And um, it's early days because we only just introduced it. But already, as you saw in the BBC article, um, two people in our team have already planned a holiday to go skiing in February by train, which they would have otherwise flown. So that's 
that's, that's good. And um, general enthusiasm seems pretty high. As a technologist and a marketer, are there any concepts or, or troubles that issues that keep you up at night? Certainly in marketing, I think one of the big issues is that's, that's interesting to me is greenwash. And it's greenwash is basically where companies are sort of talking about environmentally positive things as a way of selling more stuff um, without really doing anything to justify it. So um, a good example at the moment, it's a huge campaign in London, you may have seen it on the tube and so on, um, of Coca-Cola now, like they have all their adverts are talking about how their bottles are now recyclable. Um, I'm sure they're marginally better than previously, but most drinks bottles are recyclable anyway. Um, but they're, you know, they're using it to make themselves look good. That we're at a point in time where I think there's a lot of demand for companies to do better. And brands are picking up on this. They're starting to talk about these things. And some of them are, take, some of them are gonna do, you know, take real action. And I think that's, that's exciting. When it comes to web design, how, does, how is that impacting the environmental movement? And how are you able to then take web design and, and sort of incorporate that into your company values and, and have that make an effect, a positive effect on, on the environment? Sure, so, I mean, we talked about hosting, um, but there's a lot more. Most of the other stuff you can do is actually about um, improving efficiency in design and development. So what we found is that when you, when you start a design project and you, you think about how are we gonna make this less data heavy, you actually make better design choices. So you're thinking more carefully about the images that you use. Um, you know, do we need this stock photo of some people in a boardroom? So literally at a content basis? Literally at a content level, like is this adding value to the user, yes or no? Okay, let's say it is. All right, does it add more value if it's full screen? compared to if it's, you know, a slightly smaller image. And, you know, all those micro decisions that you're making, if you, if you make them through the lens of efficiency, you end up with a website that's a fraction of the size in terms of, you know, kilobytes. So is it helping reduce load times and things like that? Exactly. So if you can reduce the, the, the file sizes, um, you know, if you can make a two, a two megabyte website, 200 kilobytes, um, you know, that's 10% more efficient, less energy. Absolutely, so lightning fast load times, that's better for user experience, it's better for SEO. Um, it can also, on like really high traffic sites, then it's also impacting your hosting load because um, you're spending a lot of money on, on dealing with that traffic. If you can actually reduce the bandwidth, then it's a good thing. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, we always ask our guests, are there any books, blogs, or podcasts that you'd like to recommend for our viewers? Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, Seth Godin's podcast, Akimbo. Um, Seth Godin writes a lot of really good books on business and marketing, um, but his podcast is sort of even more bite-size. <laughs> you know, you can just dip in. It's not, it's not like one of these kind of two-hour uh, long-form podcasts. It's, I think they're about half an hour, but actually you could literally just switch one on and listen to it for five minutes, and you pretty much always come away and feel like, ah, oh, I, I really learned something. Um, my favorite one, it just, I, it comes to mind almost every day at some point. He did an episode on sunk costs. Um, and basically the concept that everything you've done in the past is irrelevant in terms of the decisions you make moving forwards. And don't if, look backward, look don't forward. Look, don't look back, look forwards. And if that means carrying on with what you're doing, great. But if it means throwing it all in the bin, well, so be it. <laughs> That's excellent. And that was Seth Godin's... Seth Godin's Akimbo. Akimbo. Yeah. Thank you. This has been Velocitized Talks. My guest today is Tom Greenwood, Managing Director of Whole Grain Digital. Tom, it's been fascinating. Thank you. Pleasure.